get ready to enter the vortex. Starring Vandita. Hi, welcome to today's episode. Today's episode is called Picture Perfect, and it's about organizing your photo albums, and any related accessories. If you're a photographer like I am, then you may have different kinds of cameras which might involve different types of film. So the first one, which is the easiest to deal with, is the APS cartridge film. You'll notice that I have two binders for that, and these are pretty easy to organize. Well, can you hold that for a second, please? Yeah, excellent. Good to get a chance to see it. I've also put a binder label on the spine indicating what it is, which I also need to do for this one. The next step in organizing your photos is to organize your negatives. I've gotten to the point now where I have at least organized or filed my negatives. You could get these three uh, hole punched um, negative holders at any photography store and obviously the binder you can get anywhere. This one requires a label on the spine. It doesn't have one yet. It will. And how would you recommend uh, putting that label on? Would you just kind of get a pencil and write it on a piece of paper or would there be a special? I handwrite because I have good handwriting which I learned in first grade from Mrs. Wallace. But some people obviously didn't have Mrs. Wallace as a first grade teacher. So, anyway, uh, hopefully you still know how to write. If not, you'll need to use um, one of those uh, label makers. Like I showed you in Spice Girl. This is filled with other negatives, as you can see. So, there are those. Sometimes you get label or negatives of a special size. I used to take black and white pictures a lot, so I put these in these special containers. Now do you keep any kind of reference on what you have in which binders and such? So for example if you wanted to reprint to that one particular shop from you know Sweden or wherever the heck you might have been? Absolutely you can... not. No. That would take away from the spontaneity of the photo experience. I see. What you need to do, even though you're provided with these lovely negative holders. Hold it up. From wherever you happen to get your photos developed at. By the way, I recommend going to a place that only uses Kodak paper. It is truly the best paper available. Now, do you ever get your photos developed at that warehouse store? No, it is too busy and there's the risk of somebody else looking at your photos. They do however use Kodak paper and they charge a very reasonable price. So if but you don't mind somebody going through your pictures. I don't want somebody looking through my pictures other than the nice folks at Wolf Camera. I see. So now when I go to one of those one hour photo things, I mean, they don't actually see my pictures in there? Oh, they do. Oh, they do. Okay. But the point is, I don't want a non photographic worker looking at my pictures. In other words, anybody could go through the warehouse store and find my last name and my first name and know that those pictures are mine. So, once you've taken care of that, the next step is how to organize your pictures. A lot of people have a lot of different types of photo albums. I really don't recommend that because they take up far too much space and are really difficult to organize. I can give you a personal example where I made that mistake. I normally buy this size of photo album, which you can buy at your local warehouse store. Um, but I unfortunately bought this size also, and so now I have to live with the consequences of that. Now I've got a question. Now, 
you know, I've often tried to get, you know, the same style, you know, holder for my pictures, a photo album or whatever. Usually the problem is you go in and, and one day they have a certain size available when you buy it and, and you don't buy new ones for maybe a year or two. And then when you go back, they don't have that same size, they don't have the same style, they don't have the color scheme you were doing or whatever. I mean, well, how do you handle that? I don't have a color scheme. There's This is the style. I have purchased these for the past eight years at the warehouse store. So there's there's no problem. Okay. If if there is a problem, you can always go to the manufacturer of the album. Next time you buy one, be aware of where you bought it from and uh, send a note to the manufacturer, which I've done to get extra pages for the album. I see. Now, you may have some photos that you want to organize separately or differently from your normal photos. So let's look at the exception cases first. Again, uh, for slides, I bought some slide holders and I bought some pages that hold only four pictures. And just, what's that for? Just for exceptions. I see. And what you would constitute an exception? <coughs> a photograph that was taken maybe by a professional photographer at a holiday party. It's just a whole different types of photos. Okay, or for example, if somebody gives you a photo, you know, for Christmas or something and, and it's not the size that you normally use? Correct. Okay, or if you can't seem to cut it to the appropriate size, that's also okay. Um, each of my albums face forward, of course, and each has a binder label on it at the exact height as all the others, more or less. I try to write as neatly as I can, indicating the events and the pictures. I separate people pictures from places pictures because I've been told that place pictures are quite boring without the people in them. However, it's difficult to have people in your pictures when you're traveling alone. So, the way I've categorized my pictures is the following. My travel pictures, which nobody likes to look at because there's nobody in them, just me, are in the back. And those are organized by year. So there's summer of 89, then winter of 89, then various vacations, um, 88. Um, and then some are just random vacations, vacations. Um, if I have space, what I like to do is actually write down where I went to. Now, when I'm putting in place pictures, it's very important to put them all in the same direction. So you'll notice all these pictures are uh, landscape as opposed to portrait. You'll notice when I take some portrait pictures that I try to keep them consistent. And I don't have any of this one. When I have pictures that are portrait style, as these are of Stonehenge, you'll notice that they're all in the same direction. So the you viewer tilt that forward slightly. Yeah, very good. So yeah, the viewer of the glad. photos is not turning their heads around in an exorcist-like manner to try to view the pictures in the album. This way, you can also easily find what's appropriate for visitors to view, as well as what your own personal and photographic preferences may tend to. Because you don't want the in-laws to see pictures that are um, not appropriate for them to see. Could you give me an example of what that would be? Or? Pictures taken by a Polaroid camera, for example, might not be appropriate for in-laws. I see. Would you put those normally just in your your photo binder? or? Yes, they'd be labeled, of course. I see. Do you have any such pictures? No, of course not. I okay. don't do things like that. All right. So again, you'll notice that all the landscape pictures are landscape oriented. And I think I noticed a couple here that were portrait style, and these are separate. So again, these are all the up and down ones. Now that one there had a picture of a person in it, and it was next random to one of those building. Oh, random person, which kind of constitutes scenery. Person I do not know. Whatever. Okay. Sideways pictures, up and down pictures, sideways pictures. 
The spine, you can read, says London 99. Okay. Now, what to do about pictures that are from your previous life, where people were not aware of organizational techniques as they are today. I labeled that album, Family and Friends. And if they're older ones, and they're small size pictures, like Polaroids, for example. Here's one Polaroid of a desk. you see it? I see. Why do we have this Polaroid of this desk? Is there any particular significance to the desk? Is it's that the like... desk your father photographed. I see. It wasn't like Abraham Lincoln's desk or anything like that? No. Okay. But you'll have to take all your pictures out of all your older albums. You have to. And why you... is that? So that you can organize them in the new methodology. I see. Just like when you get a new software system at work, you have to migrate all your old systems to it. Otherwise, you're making your new system as obsolete as your old systems. Most people, obviously, don't realize that. That's why there's a lot of consultants who are employed. Okay, now this one's called Weddings, Parties, Xmas, Graduations. This is where Christmas pictures that you get from <coughs> people who send you a picture of themselves every year would go, for example. And I have a friend of mine who sends me a picture of herself and her husband or her family every year. This is where her pictures go. This is also birthdays of mine from the past. So they're all here. Now they're not <coughs> entirely as organized as I would like them to be, yet they are fairly chronological. And uh, they're in pretty good sequence. Anyway, you'll notice I have these pictures from my childhood, which I have taken and conveniently placed into this location. Please standardize on photograph size. Four by six is ideal. If you don't take four by six pictures, I recommend you cut all your pictures that you have taken in the long ways picture and the APS film. Okay, there's really no reason not to have any other size, uh, other size of the photos. Okay. Here we have a travel album, and you'll probably have noticed that the albums are different colors. That's fine, it helps you identify them, and personalizes the whole photographic experience. So, but here I've labeled actually what trips I took and what year it was. So, and there's nothing wrong with taking pictures of um, things, nothing whatsoever. I personally enjoy pictures of um, buildings that are decayed or decaying, and construction sites. Here is an album called Pets, Residences, and Employment. I've had many pets that have gone through, um, many residences until recently, and many places of employment. So it helps to keep records of the idiots that you used to work with so that you make sure you don't work with them again. Are you trying to say that you have a large collection of name tags and hair nets? I do, and badges, so I can get back into any of the buildings I need to. Here's my old bird, Pookie. I forget who this is. The love bird. Iggy the iguana. Bunny the bunny. Kitty the cat. pictures of Sammy the cat. So the deal is basically the following. Residences. You want to take pictures of your house also for security reasons so that when things get stolen you can find out where they are. Shouldn't they also, you know, you should take pictures of your house and store them off-site, right? Like in a safe deposit box or something in the event of a fire or... That's correct. Or if somebody were to rob you and actually steal the, you know, photographs in addition to <coughs> whatever else. That's correct. Okay. Um, yeah, these aren't totally in order, as I mentioned, but they're close enough. Here's a lovely picture of the cat. with a reindeer hairband. Oh, goodness. 
<laughs> she looks so happy to be there. And here's a picture of the other cat with the same hairband. All right. So, any other tips for the viewers, Anita? I call these pictures kitty porn. K i t t y. That's a new phrase of the day, kitty porn. You probably have pictures of your high school fond remembrances from college. You want to document those separately. These may be pictures that are inappropriate for parental viewing. Um, again, any other old albums you had, those need to be removed. Also, a lot of those had adhesives, which damaged the photographs. This way you have a photograph on plain white paper and no damage to the photographs. So again, you label it high school and college. What you do then, here, more vacations. Again, these go here. You'll notice here that I mistakenly took some pictures with the APS camera, which of course they develop in this like extra large size. So these pictures will need to be trimmed using a trimmer. Now what if, um, I don't know, what if you can't trim the photo? For example, you know, the, the, the thing you're trying to get a picture of takes up the whole picture. I mean, then if you cut the picture, you would lose part of it. Nobody's going to notice. No one will notice. And I see. frankly, most people won't even care. It really won't damage much of anything. Here's my photographic cutter. You can buy cutters of all sizes at an art supply store. I actually laminated a lot of these pictures for posterity. And if you want to keep the picture centered, this is a picture of um, somebody who doesn't want to be seen. Um, but if you want to center the picture, just cut off from both sides. Nobody will know whatsoever that you have done this. Now, do you actually measure to determine how much to cut off? No. I see. You There's sort no of need to measure. Okay. Oops. <laughs> this can actually be quite an enjoyable evening event. Again, use caution and safety when handling sharp objects. And there you have it. Nobody has, nobody's any the wiser that this picture was trimmed along the sides. I see. And then it can now go back conveniently in its predetermined location. And it now fits perfectly. Here's a picture I took and I trimmed previously. Can you tell that it's been trimmed? Of course not. Why would you be able to tell it's been trimmed? It's well, yeah, but that's a picture of, of a field of flowers. I mean, what if it's, you know, people or something? Most people are not very good photographers, myself included. So if that's the case, nobody is going to know whatsoever that this happened. Okay. Again, label everything. If it's a wedding that you took too many pictures of, you'll have to put that under separate cover. Lately, I've had to go to a bunch of funerals too, so I want to start a new album called Funerals or Funeral Associated Events. And weddings can be in a whole separate one, because initially I hadn't gone to very many weddings. Pretty soon I'll be going to a lot of baby birthday parties and then graduations and so on, as friends of mine have children. This one's called Growing Up. This is where I put random assorted pictures of mine. And again, you'll notice I removed these from other albums. Some of them get frayed at the ends, but that's the cost of organizing. Organizing is war, people. Be prepared. No, isn't that the Boy Scouts? 
Now, when you get random pictures from people from random, like, Christmas cards <coughs> and things, what you need to do is have a place for them in one of your albums. I have recently gotten lots of cards from people with their pictures in them. And, yeah, I might recommend it. That's very nice, but um, it, it really uh, wreaks havoc on an organizational photographic system. So, that falls under the Christmas category. And so all Christmas pictures go in here. Sometimes it bears reorganizing pictures because you may not have allocated enough space. Uh, here we go. I have many pictures of Kay and Pierre, but they sent me another one this year, and I have no more space for their pictures. I will need to move them to another album. And since I can pr pretty reasonably expect Kay and Pierre to send me pictures uh, for quite some time, I'll have to devote several pages to them. This is also a good place for um, company photo um, opportunity pictures, like when you and a date get photographed at a Christmas party that's company sponsored, normally you'll get one nasty little picture back from them. This is a good place to store these items, is in the Xmas section of the album. If somebody in your family has a baby or has had a baby recently, you'll probably be receiving lots of new pictures of them, whether you want them or not. The point is, they all have to go into a separate album, labeled as such. We don't get to see what's written there? Um, I don't think it's a good idea. Okay. I don't really know what the parameters are. I see. You think your sister will be upset if you said her name or... Well, we can't say her name, that's for sure. But, okay. the whole point is, you're going to get lots of pictures, so you might as well start a separate album of pictures of the baby, because everybody photographs babies, because all babies are cute, and that is mostly true. My niece is certainly cute. I've seen a lot of babies with big heads. They're not very cute. So... <laughs> do you understand do? that, I mean, babies are generally born with big heads? No, I've seen ones with heads that are really big. I see. <coughs> I can only imagine what they were like as babies. <laughs> I see. They must have been incredibly grotesque. Okay. I have noticed a need for myself to purchase a photo album or two because I am clean out of space in my photo album area. This I will add to my list of shopping items to get from my favorite warehouse store. And I will of course have to move all these pictures from two weddings that I went to immediately to the new albums. It's rather unfortunate, but it will have to be done. In the meantime, this is a good holding location. What to do when you've bought extra albums that you can't really use. Um, a good thing is to give them to relatives, or perhaps to re-gift them. Um, if you can't return it, um, sometimes a good place is work, where you'll see pictures of everybody all around the hallways, and maybe consolidating them into a corporate yearbook would be a good idea. Have you ever thought that perhaps the reason people put them all around the hallways is to be surrounded by the photographs? No. no. There must be containment. I see. Plus of all, the pictures are quite inappropriate to have hanging around the office. And if you put them in a corporate album, you have them for posterity. So, let me just show you how I put negatives into the negative binders. You'll see I already put the labels in here, I just have not labeled the binders as of yet. But, all the memories are contained in one space. There's no need for you to go hunt down some picture album in the garage or the basement if you have one or any other such location. All you have to do is go directly to your files and you can find whatever you need. I was not quite this organized, or at least I didn't used to be with albums, um, but I find it really helps. And the reason I don't organize the negatives is because you still want to have, I don't know, you don't want to be totally organized, plus who has time to do all of that anyway? I certainly don't. When I throw them in here, I just throw them in real quick. And, you know something, I don't even really bother <coughs> with the whole concept of, oh, no fingerprints on the negatives. Trust me, if you want a picture, you can get it, and it's really not very much of a big deal at all.
So just grab it from the end and put it in. When you put the negatives in, there is a space for you to um, write down uh, what's on the negatives. But frankly, my pictures, um, yeah, there's no reason to because my negatives aren't organized enough for me to really take advantage of that organizing opportunity. And again, I, I try to emphasize on my show what's practical um, and appropriate without going over the top. Uh, of course, sometimes I do, but you can take to home um, whatever level you feel is appropriate for your organizing needs. Also, when and if you do have children, I really recommend getting rid of any photographs that might be evident. That's the last thing you want them finding at any age. Especially if uh, you, you know, happen to die suddenly and they have to go through your stuff. Put yourself through that scenario. What would happen if? And get rid of all that incriminating evidence. <coughs> because it will not be, you know, it will not be pretty. So that kind of brings new meaning to that expression, live every day as if it were your last. Uh, <laughs> sort of a bit of a misbalance there. You don't really want to have pictures around of you doing nasty things for your children to see. Nobody wants that. If you have them on your computer, erase them. Yeah, do you have any tips for people who are, you know, more digital photographers? I mean, I know me personally, I I don't even think I own a... I, I actually, I may own like a little Instamatic or something, but I don't normally shoot on film. I, I do everything digitally. Any tips for how to organize your photographs? Get them printed. <laughs> That's your answer, okay. And laminate them, please. <clears throat> and laminated, okay. Um, I don't take digital photographs because I don't think the quality is there. I believe in 35 millimeter pictures, and the APS film is one of convenience and very handy on a little trip. How about those little disposable cameras? Do you have anything to say about those? Um, well, they're disposable. Uh, they harm the environment because you can dispose of them, and that puts a great deal of waste in our landfills. So, while I do believe in certain things to fill in the landfills, I don't think photography should contribute to that too much. So try not to take bad pictures because that wastes paper also. Um, the digital camera, no, you have to wait between shots. It just can't do what a professional series 35 millimeter camera can do. And if you're going to do that, then you have a very temporary history of what photographs you've taken because they're not on paper and because of that they can be deleted and be lost very quickly. But if you put them on a CD-ROM, for example, and stored it in a safe deposit box... You can't have access to those. What do you mean? What I mean, in other words, to keep a, a, an additional copy on CD-ROM in a safe deposit box one of the things about digital photography is you don't lose the, the colors over the years where even a negative will, will start to fade. I believe in the fade. separation of church and state, and this would be one of those things. I'm confused, but go on. Anyway, you're down to, you got a... 30 seconds left. got 30 seconds left, exactly. I, I don't think that uh, photography is really a digital thing. Digital is temporary photography. It's informational. It's news. It's media. Um, but it, it's not really a thing that you can take care of your kids. Because let's face it, you can't look at a, an album, uh, a digital album uh, on the toilet, but you can look at a photo album. Yeah, but you can't, you can't email your, your photo album, whereas you can I mean, if it's digital. Anyway, we won't have this religious no, debate at the moment. No, goes into space issues. That's why I said I believe in the separation of church and state. Anyway, um, that's it for this episode. I'm the anal retentive housewife.